and welcome to Sonic Talk number 406, recording today live on Wednesday the 10th of June. Uh, first things first, I obviously want to say thank you to our sponsors. If you want to find out more about what they've got to offer, not only are they giving away a copy of Ozone 6, that's Isotope, of course. Uh, we've also announced the winner of the last week's competition who will have won a copy of Ozone 6. So stay tuned for that. Excuse me, but I also want to say thank you ever so much to Dan, who's in the chat room, because uh, last week you may remember there were some issues with the chat room. We had a, a troublesome person, so we figured it was time to get serious, and Dan has made it all serious. You can now register your chat uh, nickname. You can come back and have it next week, and all of those good things, and uh, hopefully anybody troublesome will be automatically kicked off by this uh, fabulous technology he's set up. So thanks again, Dan, for that. And I'm just checking everything else is running, because uh, when things go smoothly, I get a little nervous because quite often they they stop being uh, going well as soon as I say such things. So, first of all, I'm going to say hello to... I've got uh, three guests this week. We'll start over there in uh, Connecticut where we have Mr. Richard Hilton, Hiltonius.com, who is a uh, keyboard player for Chic and also Nile Rogers' uh, studio guy where he mans the controls for all of those hits and presumably touches even the hitmaker guitar from time to time, which is reputed to be, well, I mean, it's responsible, along with Niall, for some of our, uh, this and last century's sort of biggest hits. How are you, Rich? Are you well? Yes, thank you. Very well. Excellent. And Rich, I know Rich has got a new setup today, which is why he's not on his usual microphone. So uh, if you're wondering why Rich is roomy, it's because he's on his laptop mic this week. But uh, it doesn't matter. It's what he says that counts, not how it sounds. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much, Rich. And we've also got over there in Bristol, Mr. Gaz Williams over there in his base garret, uh, where he uh, he's he's responsible for many uh, amazing tunes as well as uh, music technology, production, mastering, all kinds of stuff. GazWilliams.me. How are you, Gaz? Yeah, very good. A little bit fried after doing a load of rehearsals for uh, uh, Asteroid Deluxe. That's the space rock band I play and we're doing a soundtrack for the Holy Mountain, a live soundtrack uh, at a festival, well, a Green Man Festival. I think I mentioned it last time. But we've been, um, oh, it's been beautiful weather and we've been in a basement studio for, uh, typical. But um, yes, that's coming on really good. In fact, we're playing in Bath on Friday, if anyone's around, in the Royal Oak. Ah. Uh, we're, and we're going to preview some of these psychedelic, weird things so it's going to be quite interesting to do that <laughs> oh, I, I, it's... I might try and get down i'm otherwise engaged on friday but i will try and get along if i can that would be uh, awesome <clears throat> i thought oh, it's saturday it might be saturday but um yeah what i was going to say lots of synth action going on in the soundtracks Ooh. so we've got um are you going to be bringing uh, your entire sort of gadgety rig along with you to the to the pub Mm, I'm, well, it's really it takes such a long time to get it all set up. Um, but I was running um, the uh, Nectar as a controller keyboard going into MIDI splitter into Strike Fet and a Rocket. Ah. Uh, and then using the Thera Mini as well. Oh, wow. Uh, that sounds like good. I'm looking forward to this. I, if, I hope it's Saturday because I will be able to come on Saturday. That's for sure. <laughs> Saturday, uh, Friday, I'd, I bet I'd, 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 should find out when it is yeah well let me know anyway but uh, thank you very much for joining us gaz and of course we also have mr mark tinley mark tinley.co.uk who's there in glastonbury the sort of epicenter of ley lines of all things good uh, all ley lines yeah all, all ley lines apparently uh, ley lines of course are supposed to be sort of uh, what are they they're supposed to be roots magnetic. of power magnetic roots or something yeah. I, I don't follow all it so. power all the, yeah the, that, that glastonbury kind of... is the is the heart chakra of the earth, apparently, according to some of the people that live here, which means we are love, actually. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Mark, yeah. I, I, that, that must be, you must be, yeah, you must be very honoured to be at All the centre of love. Anyway, oh, we great. love you, Mark, too. So There's some fabulous characters here. Yeah. And, uh, that's saying something, considering most people think that I'm slightly unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Of course, this week, uh, we've got also want to say thanks to the people in the chat room. We'll just let's see if I got the chat room. Uh, where's the chat room? The chat room is here. Yes, the chat room is here. Everybody's uh, registered. We've got a fulsome chat room, if you don't mind me saying so. I know I want to say this and I'm saying it today. And uh, there goes everybody there. So, right, let's start things off. Now, the first thing I want to check out is uh, this video here. 
Why does everybody have to do videos in big, white, empty spaces, I wonder? But uh, it... These are the oh wow kind of motion widgets that kickstart a campaign. Where did all the reverb go? Astonishing. There they are, they're in their CNC the machine. Ah, here we go. We've been working super hard on a completely new breed of musical instruments. Working closely together with great artists to create the best possible product. Whether you just started making music, have been producing for years, or play live for sold out football stadiums, our instruments connect with every possible software and empower you to create music with more passion, intuition, and fun. There we go. I'm going to stop that because it just goes on to kind of be more of one of those Kickstarter videos where you uh, you find out how great everybody is and how wonderful it is. But the Kickstarter thing is, there's five of these guys. <clears throat> they've just started. I think they've got 28 days to go. They're looking for 50,000 euros. They're what uh, nearly 10 percent of the way there with uh, most of the month. And these are five little instruments. Um, there's a wi uh, a wob, which is what, as far as I can tell, it's like a D beam. Then there's also a wiggle, which, as far as I can tell, is a bit like a kind of position sensor for um, like a, a, a Wii thing. So you can send axes. These have all got sort of modifiers, so you can change the behaviour of them as well. So they are, they're not just sort of simple circuits. And they and there's a drum, which is a couple more buttons, uh, and and I think you 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 shake it and it causes a drum so it's quite similar to wiggle but it's got more buttons and then there's pads which are just four pads and a modifier and they're all little usb circuit boards i think there might be some pictures of them here if i scroll up and down uh let me see yeah they're like little circuit boards that you can either buy naked uh look like they're usb bus pad or they come in this sort of machined uh handsome case which is a nice cnc machine case and it's you know it looks like an interesting concept. Although I must admit, when I started thinking about the D beam, I was it made them seem slightly less wonderful to me. And I'm going to go straight to you, Gaz, because you're playing a theremin live, and um, <clears throat> you uh, like little gadgety things. As I know, you, um, I've been typecasting you in the various reviews because you just did the little bits <laughs> synth pro kit and that fantastic jam that we enjoyed, and everybody <laughs> seems to like with the rocket and the sub thirty seven. So carry on. What do you think? Yes. You think there's any legs uh, in this? Not sure. I think um, it's expensive. It does seem a little. I, I thought the same thing myself, like, actually. For that drum, for that drum one, that's four pads, and like if you have it in its case, that's four pads for over a hundred euros. Um, Which is probably about one hundred and twenty bucks or something like that. So yeah, you could buy mm, a, mm, an actual mm, pad mm. set 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 up for that, couldn't you? you yeah, a Mattel Sonic. Yeah, you could. You know. They have said that they are publishing the 3D uh, printer files so people can make their own cases. Want to cheat, I thought that was make cool. Make their yeah. own cases. Yeah, that, so that's cool. But, uh, you know, you sort of look at these things. Um, I think they might be perfect for some people. I think that they will probably be a little bit underutilized. <laughs> I mean, like, I've got the Leap Motion here. And I've tried many times to get it into my workflow and I'm still struggling. I think it will come. But, you know, similarly, you know, some of these things, you know, the idea of it's quite interesting. But, you know. Well, actually, think about it. Isn't the Leap Motion under 100 bucks? Yeah, it's about 69 quid or something. So, and that's so, got really sort of multi-touch, multi-dimensional. I mean, again, it's quite yeah. hard to find a, a use for it. But Well, I mean, <clears throat> Geert Bevan's excellent eco uh gecko gecko software um that's the best fun i've had with the uh with the leap motion and in fact i really recommend that if you but it just takes a lot of i think the problem with these things is it takes a lot of time to set up so yeah. just to try something out for the first time you have to put a few hours in you know configuring everything setting everything up uh so yeah but once it's you know and uh but that but sorry coming back on to topic though i mean um yes i've got mixed feelings about these i mean i like the idea of the cheaper ones uh yeah, they need to be cheaper i think don't they i think that's my i think that would be my concern i think they're interesting ish but too expensive well when you consider this is probably about 99 quid which is not far off the cost of the cnc machine thing and this has got you know god knows how many controls <laughs> that thing 
This is a Korg, like Korg Nano Control 2, which is what I run the show on, in fact, if you see. They're not 99 quid now. Aren't they? You well, get one of them for 50, 30 50, quid. Right, exactly. So it's kind of... I've got one of these. Uh, let me... Oh, yeah, Nano. Uh, yes. Korg Nano Pad. I can't remember if it's the one or the two. So I've got an XY Control. Yeah. Oh, can't do the spectrum. <laughs> XY Controller and, and uh, 16 pads on it. It's kind of like a TR-505 with no drums in it. Yeah, actually... And Andy, it cost me 20 quid off eBay. So Andy Keys, a.k.a. Synth Jam. Synth Jam on Instagram, if you follow him, he's got some great photos, and he's always first with stuff. 35 quid, he says. So, yeah, they got a bit. it's a bit tough, isn't it, I would say. I don't know, Rich. We seem to have talked ourselves out of this. What do you think? <laughs> um, I'm waiting for somebody to get really good at these things, these yeah. spatial controller-based uh, Designs. We've seen it in gloves. We've seen it on buttons. We've seen the D-beam. Um, on some level, it does remind me of being, it's kind of the D-beam industry in standalone form. But uh, And there's nothing wrong with that. And I didn't even poo-poo the D-beam as much as many people did. But I'm just waiting to see somebody blow me away with something on one of these things. And I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I but th- I hope they will, and I think it's a perfectly viable product idea. I agree with you that it's probably expensive as compared to a core nano control like the one you held up. And uh, I wish them well. I want to see somebody rock one of these things. Yeah, I know. I, I would agree with that. I mean, I think the other thing is, I mean, Roland must have like a warehouse full of D beams they haven't put in stuff yet. So you know, put that on a little circuit board, maybe on an Arduino or some other kind of thing, and you're, you're kind of there, aren't you? In fact, uh, that reminds me, I got this. The Kickstarter, the MIDI widget thing came the other day. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for the connectors to show up, but. Uh, it showed up. Uh, I've got it here. This is the little board. This is essentially just a little USB board with, I think there are 20 or or more GPIO ports on it. And you can just program it to turn MIDI commands into stuff that happens electronically. And that's, you know, standalone. And that could do kind of a bunch of stuff. And that was only 50 bucks. But yeah, so I think... So the, do these... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go. Uh, do these things actually make sound or they're just... No, MIDI they're just controls. little USB controllers, I believe. <clears throat> wow, so they are expensive then. Yeah. Mm. Are they? And is it called Ow, Ow, or Oh, Wow? Ah, that's a good point. Let's see. Does it have a way that you say it? If I scroll back to the top of this. Because uh... if it's called Oh, Wow. Oh, well, wow. That's that's a really oh, wow. Good... I'd say it's not Wow, Wow. It's Oh, Wow. It might be Ow, Ow. <laughs> oh, yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what happens if you with... use your own 3D laser print, 3D printer to cut the things out and you don't file the edges down and you just get, you know, it gets a bit sharp. Oh, that, but speaking it's a, of that, I mean, that <clears throat> sorry. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good idea, but I can't see why it's like, what's so different about it? They're sort of like saying, hey, we've got this brand new idea and it's all really cool and it's all, all really like different and everything. But what is different about it? It's if it's a MIDI controller. What, yeah. Why is it a brand new idea? It just looks like a D beam and a dr- uh, and a drum pad and a, a, a accelerometer game maybe. controller. Yeah. It's like yeah, there is that. I think there's what is new. What is new? But as Rich says, you know, maybe we're waiting for someone to show us what's new about it. Maybe we're mm. just not the target for it. So well, you know, what's new about it possibly is where it's using kit. You know, it's using yeah. like a it's crowdfunding the- thing, which is still quite a new thing. It's using three D printing files as well, which is quite a new thing. It's mm. using lots of these technologies. God, we could be quite cynical, can't yeah, we? Yeah, no, well, that, that, that is fair. Fair. That is I fair. like the Bob thing. I like the fact that the 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 D beam controllers thin enough to get underneath the strings of my guitar so i yes. did actually like that's look a good that. one that that's looks good nice one. yeah that looks nice. Uh, yeah. one thing that is interesting i don't know if i i was in uh, when i was in brussels the other day i remember going past a like a print shop um which did you know like you get signage business cards but they also had 3d printers in there as well so presumably you can go in with a file and come out with really yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know if that's going to be coming to you know our side of the channel boots. and other things boots yeah or one of the major <laughs> stores but that's quite an interesting idea as well but that that is rather a distraction and perhaps not mm. anything to do with what we're talking about not so much but uh, okay um mm. right well i think it's probably time to uh, quickly just uh, well no we'll give it, we'll, we'll give it one more uh, we'll give it one more topic because we did start a little bit late uh right so this is the next one this is the um uh, yes, this is my rather uh, link bait, uh, what Apple didn't tell us about iOS 9. Uh, of those perhaps who weren't aware, um, 
this Monday was the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference where traditionally stuff is announced. I mean, it's supposed to be for coders and people who are developing for the Apple platforms, but that's tend to be used as a sort of way of announcing new technology. Rather than new hardware, they tend to announce new you know, OS. And iOS 9, which is slated to be coming out in uh, the autumn, uh, one of the uh, amongst the many things that it did... Um, uh, and the way that Apple are extremely good at making it seem like they're innovating when, in fact, you know, we've been waiting eight years for a caps lock uh, for a non-cap letter keyboard on maybe iOS devices. They now do that, for instance. This was the inclusion. We've got audio units extensions, which means that the audio units extension will work under iOS 9 and presumably the same or very similar code can be published to both platforms and then sold in the App Store. Now, you know, this... It's, it's a bit like sort of geekery and inside, but I think this actually might be quite interesting in terms of getting people to develop for the audio units format, uh, which, as we know, there are lots of competing formats. And because you essentially have a second platform when you're developing some of these things, I mean, obviously, there's going to be issues with the GUI and the sandboxing security and what have you. But the fact that you can sell it on the App Store and it will run perhaps on both platforms might encourage more people to do some cool stuff. I don't know. What do you think about this, guys? I think it's big news in terms of, certainly in terms of the way that plug manufacturers are going to have to maybe adopt to it. I know there's a lot of reticence about this and Apple have cunningly been taking bits out of the operating system in subsequent uh, new versions to try and drive people into this way of, Evil. you know, they, they want a cut. They want a cut of all the plug-in sales. So, by making this framework that you buy your plugins as you buy apps. Now, that's, I think it's from the end user point of view, it's actually really cool, isn't it? I mean, if your plugins, it's, you know, it's all installed for you. You just click on a thing, updates, you get, you just get a little reminder of, you just click, bang, you don't need to hunt around for files or do anything. It, it's quite an attractive idea that plugins will be, um, you know, sold that way. And, then the interaction with it with being able to buy plugins for ipad apps then as well it is quite interesting now we don't know do we yet whether they will be cross-platform the plugins themselves whether that will have to be certain plugins will be cross-platform well um, i'd imagine there's going to be massive issues with the gui because that's always mm -hmm. the thing that's yeah, that yeah. causes people the most problem is making a gui yeah. that will work on multiple things so yeah mm -hmm. i don't know yet that you, but that's a good point it may be other things but, yeah, but I wonder though whether we're going to see a lot of cheap plugins on the OSX OSX platform on the desktops. Whether we, you know, as a result of this, you know that you know at, uh, where a price point of a regular plugin maybe one hundred and twenty, one hundred and fifty dollars maybe we'll be seeing app, you know, more like iOS prices of. Of apps, of I don't plugins. know. I, I would imagine, and I would. I, it depends which way it goes. If you develop a desktop one and it goes to iOS, you could see that maybe being a, a USP, so it might be more. But if it's an iOS one that's going to desktop, it but might be less. It's getting increasingly hard to justify the price difference. So you know, some of the, yeah. I, the iOS apps that are coming out. I mean, Arturia is a good one. Really, you know, there's a disparity between the price point of their uh, iOS, you know, instruments to the desktop. Mm. instruments so Same i do with, wonder um, we will see more, some more parity maybe so rich yeah. you look like you're keen to jump in here i mean do you think it's going to be of, of some use i mean it, it, i hopefully i think it's more of a maybe more of a big thing for developers possibly i don't know i do think it's going to be of some use although it may take a little time to see how it plays out and i don't think anybody can really blame them for wanting to sell their au package into their mobile devices since mobile devices are their most profitable market and as to the cost of the same software in various platforms, we're watching that also play out in Reason because a lot of guys who are previously writing software for VST, AU, and whatever, you know, RTAS or now AAX, are um, now porting that stuff into a Reason uh, platform and selling it at a different price point than they sell it to the other people. So it's, there's already some precedent for this here, and I would not expect you have to pay $99 for an Echo plug-in to run on my um, iPad. Yeah. I just I just wouldn't expect to have to do that. Whereas to, if it's really good and I want to buy it for, you know, my, my DAW on a laptop or on a desktop computer, then I understand. And that makes sense within the price structure 
of the product itself. Yeah, I think that's. I, so I think what Gaz was saying is we may well end up in a situation where things become more even. But again, I don't know, Mark. I mean, I, yeah, well, that would be all right too. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I think yeah, but the price the price differences are so like wildly different, aren't they? Like Waldorf's Nave as a as an iOS app is about nineteen dollars or something. But if you buy it as a plugin, it's a hundred and 150 well it's multiple for, yeah it's multiple formats so you get vst but it's AU. the same thing isn't it well i mean it's effectively the yeah, same so, synthesizer yeah, but, so but, it must be pretty much yeah, the same might, i guess yeah it doesn't do anything different does it no i no. suppose i suppose that's, that's the bottom line it's an advanced wave table synthesizer one of the i'm looking at now one of the 149 149 euros for the vst or 19 which is probably the same in euros the ios it doesn't make sense i'm wondering mark whether perhaps you're uh somebody in your in your neighborhood is is downloading massive amounts of data because you just went a bit blocky and uh, your audio dropped out a little bit but i I think maybe it's me hang on (laughs) oh what i opened itunes and it decided it was going to do something that's what's happened what's that what's that that rich has got there what was that rich <clears throat> oh, it's just an OS update in my. Uh, ah, phone. gotcha. What are you doing? OS, OS, no, no, not, not, not OS, OS nine. nine. Unless you're on the beta. I... What were we talking about? Because I got completely distracted Sorry. by the price I'm... difference. What was the? What was the? What well, it's was just the advantages. I suppose. Get... The, the, I suppose the advantages. Oh, AU. Yes. AU in good, the though. mobile device. What will happen is this. This is my prediction. They will both be the same. So we'll have AU plugins on the computer and AU plugins on the iPad. They'll develop for both platforms. People will get used to using the version on the iPad and being able to utilize the touchscreen. And eventually, we'll be able to persuade Apple to put touchscreens on their computers so that we can do what we do on Windows 8.1. 8.1. Yeah, that may be true. But, uh, but don't forget I want to you know, be able to now out and touch my screen and do multiple things at once. And I find when I'm working on the Mac, I'm I'm really kind of forced to let me in c- let me cut in let, let me right. let me cut in. So the thing yeah. though now, you know, we can with the latest operating system updates with iOS. Now there's there's a there is software like audio mucks and um, music io which is allowing our devices our ios devices to be uh aggregated within yeah, the within the system o- yeah. osx yeah, sure. so so then those plugins you know having your touchscreen on your lap makes a lot more sense than reaching over to the screen for, for touching so being able to actually yeah. have your plugins as modular things that you touch and have it in your hand but it's you know coming out on your DAW on your main screen is now we have that now, and you know that's pretty oh, cool. cool. You right. know it's pretty cool. Yeah, we're but sort of, a... we're, we're not oh. kind of grabbing this a little bit though. We're kind of like still looking forward. What's you know it's like, but it's this is a pretty big thing now, and it wasn't available okay, a couple then, of so months why ago. Would I go, <laughs> why am I going to go and buy the Nave Advanced Wavetable Synthesizer yeah, as a point. VST because yeah, I've got why? more functionality if I buy it as an yeah. iOS. I mean, I, I guess, guess I've point... got to take into consideration the cost of a fast iPad. Well, more um, uh, okay, let me put it this way. I mean, without getting too down the rabbit rabbit hole, you know, if you buy it for uh, a, a AU or VST or AX or whatever, you can run multiple instances of it. On an iPad, you've only got room for one. You know, that's basically... Okay. That, that, I mean, that, that justifies a certain amount of price change as well, I think, and that's fair enough. And, and also, you know, speaking, if, if, if I were to represent the developer voice, they might say, well, yeah, but do you know how much work goes into creating the other versions? You know, it's not, it may look the same, but under the hood, there are lots of different things happening. So, I mean, maybe the fact that we've now got this AU thing across two of the platforms, that at least would somehow make it a little less work. I don't, I don't, for one instance, think it's just like I've made a plug-in and now it's on the iPad. I mean, I'm sure there's an awful lot more to it than that because you've got different graphics routines and libraries and all that other stuff. But I don't want to get too into it. But, but you know, hopefully it will mean it will encourage people to innovate, continue to innovate, and it means that they've got kind of one uniform way of representing that across both platforms in one go-ish. Um, <clears throat> ish. But, uh, <laughs> do, do we know is AU a frozen platform? I mean, because VST 
is continuing to develop and you know obviously vst3 with its note expression you know is is, is a huge thing and yeah, it, that's, that's something that AUs don't do do we know if is there is there a roadmap of of au do we is there anything in the public domain about that do we know I, if no, it, I, I really couldn't tell you but i would assume so, uh, if it's it, crossed, well, just yeah oh, right, sorry uh, just just to make that point though i guess you know if a lot of people might start just going down the AU path then, you know, once this happens and, uh, you know, I'm... maybe cheaper AU. And it might be a shame because VST as a format is a better, much, much better format to support. Mm. So it's, it, it could create Tell an unbalance. It could, it could unbalance things, yeah, you know, right. tip it <clears throat> or too, too much towards audio unit. Yeah. And that could be a bad thing. No, that's but a fair you're... point. Do you remember when Apple took Logic over? Basically, they threw VST out. So earlier instances of Logic supported VST right up until version 6, I think. And at version 6, they threw VST out. So I think that was an oversight on their part. And they obviously did it so that they could push their audio units forward. Mm. But I agree with you. I think VST as a format, having moved from VST to VST2 and through VST3 and continuing to evolve is, is a much more uh, viable proposition for people to write for than AU. I, AU seems to... Well, I, I guess, I guess it's, they're it's addressing... It's locked that. into this, its own world. I guess they're addressing that with this. Anyway, I don't want to dwell on it too long, but all interesting points for sure. I mean, maybe now is a good time to uh, run an ad from our plugin developer who works on multiple platforms, if I can get it to play. Of course I will. <laughs> Except this one. There we are. Ozone 6.1, of course, from Isotope. Uh, basically, it's the de facto mastering setup for many people. It covers an awful lot of processes in the mastering and also track processing. Equalizer, dynamics, maximizer, exciter, imager, post-equalizer, dither, and dynamic EQ, which uh, is very happening, but that's only on the advanced version. You can harness the tonic, sonic texture of analog gear, but with digital control. Make smarter mix decisions, aided by robust real-time visual feedback throughout all the modules, and quickly achieve authentic sounds for any genre if you want to try out isotope ozone 6 isotope.com forward slash ozone is will get you a 10-day demo and you can check it out there and of course uh we do have a competition but first we should just uh tell you the winners of last week's competition the competition requires you to be on twitter um which is a very painless process and it's worth uh, just just if you're not on it's worth it just for a quick uh, a quick punt at this and we have a winner from last week and it's he's called fabio de mauro and his uh Twitter handle is at Synapsis, S-Y-S, and he tweeted Mighty, the hashtag Mightier Mixes and Ozone 6 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. So, uh, Fabio, if you would like to get in touch, the Isotope Fairy will bestow a copy of Ozone 6 to your email address. And we have a, um, a winner this week, uh, a competition this week as well. Isotope, uh, because they're sponsoring the show, they're also allowing us to give away yet another copy. So what you need to do if you're on Twitter, you just uh, tweet the hashtag mix to the max ozone six uh, to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. So if you're listening on audio, that's the hashtag mix to the max and the hashtag ozone six uh, letter six to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. with a Z. Uh, there's also 140 characters, as we know, in uh, uh, Twitter. So you can add some additional stuff in there. We do read it. I know Isotope 2, they monitor it well. So please do. And we want to say thank you very much to Isotope for sponsoring the show. It's been uh, a great pleasure to have you on. Not that they're going anywhere, I hope. But uh, anyway, if you want to win it, check it out. So that's it for the Isotope slot. Right, so let me just get back to my notes. Um, right. Ah, here we go. Now this is, uh, this little cigar box project is the sampler box, which is uh, something that Gaz found. Brilliant little thing, basically for about 50 quid's worth of uh, components plus a box. You can make uh, a Raspberry Pi driven, which is a mini computer that I know, um, you know, we use quite a lot here for various f functions. I just plug a mini controller in it, an SD card with samples in folders, and then just flip through them with those buttons there, and you've got a sample playback system. 
And it's just a really cool idea. I mean, it's you know, I, I don't think anybody's going to say, wow, it's going to replace my S6000 or anything because it's only a playback thing. But if you can imagine something like that in a box or a couple of them, certainly playing live might be an interesting thing because you've just got your sample set. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just an SD card. Just a really neat project. And I thought it was kind of fun. I know, Rich, you're, you're more about using the stuff than perhaps building it. But... Uh, a cool kind of project, maybe a college thing or something to get people into music technology, understanding MIDI, all of those things. Just a great idea. I was impressed with that. I just think it's really cool. Me too. I enjoyed it. I thought it was neat. And uh, that, that I think it was just playing back those samples there. I don't think it's got any kind of synthesis capabilities, but I'm sure that's something you could perhaps add to it, you know, once you got into it. I think I've got the website here. It's samplerbox.org. And um, it's just a kind of nice little kind of back of the napkin kind of diagram you can download all you have to do is build the stuff and i think um if you make it it gives you a parts list uh build the electronic parts there you go there's a bit of information on how to do that and then you just download an image stick it on an sd card for the internal sd card reader you add an external sd card reader for the samples and this little buttons and a a, a, a four character display usb breakout midi and midi if you want it as well and you, you're good to go and it'll just work out of the box it looks kind of fun. I know, Mark, you seem to be the sort of guy who might. I know you built a sampler. This is something that I, I think you it, might so. actually be tempted to make order those parts and make it happen. I'm more than tempted to do it, actually. I'm just reading about it. I, here's, here's the key to why this is brilliant, actually. It boots in eight seconds. Ooh. Now, now the biggest problem with any live rig is that your sampler takes forever to load. And w traditionally, we used Akai S1000s or S3000s or S5000s or S6000s or whatever. Once you get a fair amount of samples in there, if something goes wrong and you lose your power, even if you've got a UPS, the UPS won't last more than a few minutes. So if, if something goes really wrong and you lose everything, you could spend an entire song loading everything back up again at least you know up to five minutes trying to put all the discs in and if you're if you're the player you've got a roadie at your feet putting discs in a sampler and trying to get the thing going again or if you're or if you know if you're the guy that's loading the discs you're on stage when you probably ought not to be so it's you know it's been a that's a been a problem forever hasn't it so well that's true i suppose uh, now though if you think about it now um, you probably wouldn't be feeding external media. It would be coming off faster hard drives or SSD, perhaps, because most of the people are using. But maybe. people, you know, right? Maybe it's but, moved on since S thousands, but I, or S six thousands even. But I still think that people, uh, people still use those machines. So I mean, just the fact that you can backup, just switch yeah. it on and it's there, it mm. just seems like. For Pretty me, neat. it's like, oh wow, this is like. You know, I won't. I, well, I'd be interested. It, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't say really what the cool. load the load time is or anything on any of the sample sets or what the emotional memory is. I know, not Rich. I saw you nodding there when Rich when uh, Mark was talking about you know if you've got to reload it all, could it be a yeah. cool, could be a cool kind of backup thing for maybe a mid uh, low end gig. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to do it if you're playing chic gigs, for instance, just in case. But uh, it could be <laughs> useful for some stuff, right? Well, yes. And while I don't have a cigar box, I do play a keyboard that allows sample playback on the bottom octave of the keys from a USB drive, and I use that. Right. Is that the... So uh, it's the... really not any different, ultimately, that function of this particular keyboard is really no different from what that box is doing, ultimately. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. I guess the Except thing is... it's doing it across a fuller range. I mean, this is allocating some keys for triggering, but it's... But if you can put an SD card in this, then presumably you can put large capacity SD cards in it. You can put like a huge load of samples in, couldn't you? I guess so. It, yeah. says it, can, it says it can load sample sets up to a gigabyte. So that means that means you could have a gigabyte of piano and then a gigabyte of strings. And then it, it presumably does, you know, sample set meaning that you could go from one sample set um, to the next sample set, does it? Or, or does it I think you're, I think you're imagining that it loads Maybe them. I'm and I don't think it really loads them. It plays them straight off of the storage media. Yeah. It's almost like it, hmm. it's not, I don't think there's a, a buffer in that thing. That's a gigabyte 
<laughs> no, well, um, uh, it, oh. yeah, no, it doesn't have, it doesn't have. I mean, the memory it? is the SD card is the memory, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe so. I don't know how fast you can access that stuff though, because I mean, it's not instantaneous. You'd have to have a class ten or something like that. I know, Gaz, it's something. I, I, I'm guessing hmm. I could see next to your Volker sample something for those really long form loop triggers and stuff like that. And I don't know how much you can actually change the behaviour of those things, whether you can have one shots or you know that kind of stuff. I. I think it's dead cool, and I'm going to definitely build it. I, I, well, I say build this. I, I'm going to build something. Um, uh, and I, I, I'd like to see this become really popular and for there to be a really healthy uh, user kind of you know group, people developing it. And you know, the, I'm not sure if it, it is probably open source, isn't it? Because it's on the open source, um, you know, for it to be um i'd love to see people really getting their teeth into it you know yeah i and think just, uh, and lead, being uh, a... blah 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 blah. it says uh download size is uh 1.2 well it's 1.2 gigs uncompressed which is just the mm. sort of uh the um but that'll be the os as well that, the includes the, that includes the piano doesn't it no it doesn't and what's interesting about this really? is yeah no what's interesting about this is it's a micro sd card which means it's designed to run on a pi two which is the faster that's the dual process yeah. that's a dual 1.4 or is it a dual 800 i forget which is... i i think it's i i'm gonna buy a pi 2 i've got a pi 1 for this for this purpose um yeah we really i i want to be able to sample into it you see so ah. i want to find a way of that's what i want to be able to do I think that have... sort of thing is going to be possible via something like pure data i'd imagine which is don't a... you just drag webs into it Yes, but the dragging yeah. part is is dragging onto the SD card and then putting the SD yeah. card in it, so it's not quite the same. I think what would be awesome is if you could make it and power it off a lithium battery, which I, I think you can do with Pies, can't you? Um, oh, yeah. Cause, yeah, of course you can. Lithium battery in a case, so the whole block, and then have it as a um, a little... <laughs> Actually, I've got, that on my... yeah, I've got it on my iPad, though. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Uh, but I think, no, I love the idea of it being this really robust something that you could just take out or even, you know... Um, Stick it inside your guitar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I will say yeah. one thing uh, against the pies, though. The only thing that it, there is an issue, if you don't shut them down correctly... Uh, not always, but sometimes the SD card becomes corrupted, and it's not. But it's not the memory of the samples. And I guess if it's just a standard image, you just put another one in. But that is an issue, uh, and that's likely to be. You know, I still haven't figured out a way. I mean, I've got a MIDI command that I run off um, off our switcher that shuts down, that tells them the the Pi to shut down, but it has to shut down because it has to close files and stuff. And that's that's not quite that. It's not like you know most. Um, pieces of hardware hard, hardware but that you can just switch off you don't have to go to a boot down routine or you'll damage the the rom or whatever you know and that's something that you do have to watch out for so it's not quite perfect but uh mm. pretty cool is that the same with the pi 2 is it is yeah that, yeah is you've that... got to I, I mean there are ways to do it um but you ha it it, it, it is essentially a computer and it has to shut down there may be a, a more efficient shutdown routine because obviously if you're not using networks and, yeah other interfaces which i'm guessing uh, then it may i really want this community to develop i yeah. mean open source can be just the most powerful galvanizing you know brilliant thing so i want to get involved <laughs> yeah i don't know i think that something i think something might be happening in the chat room somebody's saying that uh, we've had somebody booted off who's uh, who's been causing trouble i don't know whether it was an auto boot because of the chat room now just to go back into uh, chat room dullness um if you're interested there's now a bot that basically looks after the chat room which is called sonic state and it, it'll do things like if you type in all caps it says you're not supposed to do that and if you do it loads of times after it says please don't do that it'll kick you off and there's various other things it'll do so um yes watch out anyway <laughs> um but it's better than having somebody posting paragraphs and paragraphs of random crap in the chat room and and just dis disrupting the flow of conversation but as you can see it's clean as a whistle we have lots of people in there and uh, it's all going fabulously right let's get on to uh, another one this oh, i love this this sounds f awesome This is the best service um, emotional cello, which is a contact instrument made by harmonic subtones. Mm -hmm. 
And it re- if you check out some of the demos on the site, it sounds absolutely gorgeous and really unusual and interesting. And all the sort of bowing key switches, if you're so inclined, you could make this the kind of front and centre in a production. It's a lovely sounding thing. I'll go to you, Rich, first, because, I mean, I don't know how often you would use a solo cello. You might use uh, section cellos, which you can use in this as well. But it's for the articulations, it, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. So now I got lost in the demos. I don't know if you get a chance to check them out. I'll uh, I'll flip up the web page here just so that people can see. But it's, uh, it's a very interesting instrument. And the key switching and the other processing is is gorgeous. Do you have room in your life for a solo cello, Rich? Why not? Why not? Is it something that, I mean, I guess it's the sort of thing you might not use so much in pop pop music, apart from maybe low digs or something, but certainly in other forms, it was definitely, I mean, because a lot of these examples are quite, um, uh, I guess, classically orientated, as you would expect. Well, it's a classical instrument. Yeah. There are a finite number of articulations that you're going to have to go after, and they went after seemingly all of them. Um, and it was really, really well scripted and uh, very nice looking and very nice sounding. And uh, some of the nicest scripting I've seen. Uh, it's up there with some of Scarby's best work. It's really, really fine. And uh, it also shows off how well contact is uh, designed to allow this sort of thing to happen. But um it sounded fantastic. I loved it. Why the heck not? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think... Um the, uh, just a very quick bit of uh, specs. Uh, it's a contact instrument. Uh, it's about five gigs. Uh, runs as a native AX. So obviously, the contact engine. I think you need uh, five point uh, five and above. Um, the thing that really struck me. I don't know if any of you guys have got a need for a cello. Uh, what about you guys? I mean, I guess one might. Uh, by the time it takes you to play the articulations as fluently as the person who was demoing it, you might have actually either learned to play the cello or phoned someone <laughs> who can do it for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm fortunate. I've got a lot of musicians nearby. So these kind of things, I would much rather do it for real. So but I can understand a lot of people who use this kind of thing. Uh, it does sound good. sounds lovely. Um uh not a lot i can say about it uh i i I personally i i've really left that world behind a long time ago now um and i uh yeah (laughs) i just love working with musicians really and that's as good as these things get yeah well that's a fair point they never can you know replicate the real thing no well, that's true. I, I mean, what, the one thing that did come up, I was watching, that there are various kind of walkthroughs and what have you, and there are some really untr- interesting and unusual articulations. And the one thing he, he sort of threw in as, uh, for the for the cellist, it was a nightmare. And I was just thinking, actually, what is the process of making something like this like? Because it, it, you have to be, I mean, I'm just thinking the session and the poor musician who's having to kind of go, uh, sort of essentially kind of ring out every possible permutation in a form that's uh, you know in one or two variations or whatever has any have you ever worked on any of these kind of sample sessions i'm guessing you tinley might have done um some sample stuff in the past um, i just can't imagine what it must be like to actually work on a session like this it must be very very hard work have i done that yeah i suppose i have um i mean i used to do a sample library but no no nowhere near to this level of technical kind of um uh, acuity in with the articulations and stuff so i mean um you, you need to talk to dave spears actually i reckon he's probably done more of this than i have but he's not here is he <laughs> i suppose not no but uh... um i i i might as well talk about what uh, my kind of ideas on it and that is um i think you're right i think you would you would need to learn everything you need to know about the cello to make this work and uh, you'd need to be a cello player with an interest in electronic music for this to be even vaguely useful. And I had to put my glasses on because I thought it said Fiat Spiccato. <laughs> it actually says Fast Spiccato, doesn't it? So I, I don't know what half those things mean <laughs> as musical things. I'm not even sure if I know what piano means, really. I think, does it mean quiet or yes, loud? Quiet. Yes, quiet. 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 Well, in that context it yeah. would it would mean that so so i mean i don't know i if i plug the electric guitar in or my midi guitar 
and and the velocity crossovers or anything uh, uh, works in an interesting way with my guitar, and I could make it sound like somebody doing something supernatural on a cello, which is kind of what would end up happening, I suppose. Mm. And then uh, not just make it sound like somebody doing something supernatural on a cello, but make it sound like something supernatural but good because quite often those things don't sound good so if it if it suddenly had this you know it did something amazing then i would be interested in it mm. um i mean the thing i'm trying to replicate at the moment do you know what a sarangi is um uh, it's a, an indian stringed instrument which is very similar uh it's like it it, it its articulations are very similar to a cello, but then also it sounds like the human voice, the way it bends uh, notes and stuff. Like it sounds like an Indian singer, but it also sounds a bit like a, a string, like a viola or cello. I'm trying to like cr recreate one of those electronically. And I actually came to the conclusion that it would be much simpler to get hold of a sarangi and learn to play it. And to learn, to do the, to it's trying to trying to replicate it. It's just, it's, you know. Yeah, I guess so. I, I know. Think I, sorry. Rich, yeah, go on. I mean, Rich, Rich have you ever have you ever had to, been involved or, or witnessed any of those kind of sessions where it is purely a sample session that people are kind of creating this? I mean, I can't imagine the amount of just just repetition, uh, IT management, all of the things that go into it must be really quite um, hardcore. Well, I've never participated in it myself, ah, okay. but I have spent a lot of time talking about it with Thomas uh, Scardi, who does a lot of this sort of thing. And uh, it's as grueling as you imagine it to be. I can and imagine. Then some. And then some. In his case, he he's a guy who will get three quarters of the way through the project, figure out something that makes it all better and start over. Oh. Brilliant. Man. That's Brilliant. who he is. That's ah. the kind of guy Thomas is. And, yeah, but that's uh, what I makes the product it. so good. Yes, yes, it is. And and this guy, I suspect this guy who's made this cello is in that same sort of league. Um, I don't know him. I've never met him. I've only heard his cello, just like you. But it's pretty impressive it is. Uh, thought and recording and scripting and the, the interface is cool and it kind of makes sense and if you actually learn those left hand that bottom octave it would you know it would you could become very expressive with something like that you'd have to practice it you'd have to know what cellos do you don't have to be a cello player yeah. any more than That's i'm a exactly. great kit drummer when i'm pro programming kit drums to sound real yeah i just know what drummers do i can't actually do it in any Serious yeah, that's way. a good point. That's a good point. I just like to say in the chat room, uh, Trill uh, Tribix in the chat room said uh, my last album had samples in it, sample horns in it. I hated them so much. I've taken to learning the sax, which is actually <laughs> right. Uh, well, you know, that's not a bad <laughs> a bad concept. There, horns horns could do it to you. That's that's the toughest thing to present in any way other than with the real thing, in my opinion. The toughest thing. They all to they always the end up sounding like those uh, those awful gated toms uh, that you used to get in sample libraries that that not uh, not sound like that but that sampled horns just have that you know they're very hard to get articulations right I think. The breathing the, the breathing is so crucial to the sound and the variations in the breathing is the only people I know who even get close to use breath controllers. Yes, I think that's a very good point. In fact, I, I seem to recall there was um, there was an instrument, it was a, 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 a trumpet or something like that, that was either on an iOS device or it had a, a, a breath component to it. And it sounded, it, the artic it was a physical modeling thing. The articulation was awesome. And it really did, certainly in solo form. I mean, I don't know what it was like well, in section. Eva, isn't it thumb jam that allows you to breathe in? Gaz mm. would know this, right? And you yeah. can get some pretty cool results breathing in and playing thumb jam. I mean... As long as you can get some kind of translation of the variety that you get out of the human breath, then you can sort of start to simulate what actually happens in a horn right? Um, to some extent. But it, there's so much resonance inside the bore of the thing. It's really a complicated event, a horn. Yeah, and also you get those very complicated things you have to do with your mouth as well, which are very, you know, I mean, they're, they're very articulate things. Anyway, it's... It, it's a great sounding thing if you're after that kind of emotional cello thing and you aren't able to get a cello player and you are likely to use one maybe for a project. It, it, it does sound really lovely and it's got it's beautifully programmed, well scripted and really beautifully sampled as well. So 
very very nice um, right I'm going to go to this last the, the, some beta topics and I, I while I was researching this I found that just this great video of something that I really did not know you could do with Reason and the suite of apps this is this kind of blew my mind a little bit so this is um, the new uh, Collaborate basically that you as we know uh, Propeller Heads created uh, a figure which is like a little multi-track synth kind of widget for the iOS stuff and um so here's uh, somebody in Tokyo just doing something on figure, you know, just coming up with a little line. And the beauty of this is, is then you can just share it directly to this new um, collaborate. There we go, sharing. And then somebody else is going to pick it up via the sharing website, which I think I've got a copy of it here. It's discover, not collaborate. That's what I... I Open it directly in Reason with all the tempo stuff. Add to it. Share that. Somebody else can collab. And it just... And then... The, I mean, I won't go into it, but basically the end of the story is the person in Tokyo went to bed at half, half 11 and did that on the on the way home. The next morning when they're having a coffee at a break from work, they get a notification saying, oh, someone's done something. And there's this kind of fully formed track with... Uh, um, with vocals and what have you, because uh, I think the other the other uh, app that they've got is Take, which allows you just to overdub and then share that back. And it just looked really, really cool from Collaborative. Because, guys, we've been talking about the whole notion of the Steinberg VST Connect plugin and real-time stuff. This seems like a really good alternative, in just in terms of throwing an idea down on the bus. You know, there's, there's obviously a lot of dross out there as well, but some of it's great. Have you experienced this? I've had a little go of it. I mean... Um, <laughs> I, I just find that like figure is just way too, um, just, just, you know, it, it's, there's just not enough options in it. I think you do, you would just, everything that you do just sounds really nice, but, um, so that for me, that's the kind of flaw in it really. Uh, although, I mean, and the, the take thing as well is just, just a bit too simplistic, the technology and the thing is great. And I guess with reason um you can do it with reason out to it though can't you from reason uh yes i think so yeah you can you can mm. squirt out reason stuff as well yeah so reason to reason you can do it that way i believe so yeah in fact okay. if we go to the uh the uh discover there's all of these you know they're basically that these are reason that's projects. what they yeah these got are you, takes got you. uh mm -hmm. if we go down these are some um just and you could just check them out and go you know listen to that maybe uh, i guess if you click on it i don't know you could then just download open it in figure or reason or take i guess it's cross I, mean, I just can't understand why anyone would want to go and look at something that someone else has done on figure for instance because anyone like you know like a giraffe could probably knock out something <laughs> quite good on it that's a cool and, uh, <laughs> even giraffes can make music <laughs> but i mean you know that's the thing why so that's what gets me a little bit it's like why would you want to go and do that? It's much more fun to maybe do it yourself because it's not as though they're going to do something particularly unique because you can't. It's quite limited what you can do on oh, it. Is it. Okay. I haven't played that's, it for a long that's, time. That's my, that's my feeling. Take is a little bit different because that can be recording. So then that's much more interesting, the take one. But I'm being a little bit, I'm being a bit nasty on figure. But well, it when, is. I mean, I think when Figure came out, it was a, a very groundbreaking thing, certainly for iOS. And I don't know, I, I haven't checked it out recently because I don't have any current, currently um, compatible iOS devices. But it looks kind of cool. I know, Rich, can you see something like this? I mean, maybe your boss kind of sends you a little uh, take mumble from uh, from the bus back from the hotel to the gig or whatever, and you get it and then you can do something with it. I mean, is that the sort of thing that could happen? I mean, in your world or is it uh, not so much? Sorry, Rich. I've lost the plot. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what you're asking me about. Uh, well, whether this 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 kind of collaborative system that's working in the propellerheads kind of uh, universe, whether that ever has a, a, of any use in your world. Well, yeah, there's constant collaboration in our world. Um, there's constant movement of session data between systems inside and outside of our of our domain, and has been for. A long time, sure. But I, 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 like I said, I lost the thread. I'm sorry. I was, I was. No problem, some, Mark. I'm about, still on the horn. Topic. I'm still on the horn. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
God, I'm so negative, aren't I? I need to, like, take a happy pill or something. <laughs> Do you know how many of these things I've signed up for over the years? Like, Rocket Networks and um, what was that thing called? The E-Session thing, which I signed up for. And uh, um, all these different things. Every time something like this comes out, I think, oh, this is a good idea. I love the idea of online collaboration. Um, the only way that's ever really worked for it for me with it is for me to work with somebody and just send them stems as tracks um it never works for everybody to be on the same platform because nobody ever is um the most recent one i signed up for is called splice which is splice.com i don't know if you know about that one no I'll, um i'll try and bring and it the the it it uh it can look at your session. You upload your session and it looks at it and it goes, oh, this is an Ableton session. And it puts all of the tracks into a SoundCloud style player so people can see what the session looks like and then they can collaborate with you. And there's loads and loads and loads of users and <laughs> nobody's collaborated with any of mine. Ah. So I've uploaded a few things sort of thinking, wow, this is so cool. I've done such a cool kind of little thing here. And then, uh, and then nothing happens, you know. So, um, uh, I, I guess it's all young dudes with their DJ music doing. Oh, Mark just disappeared. I, I, I'll maybe pop in there because I think, to a degree, what tends to happen in this situation is like, collaborative. Um, Sorry, Mark, you disappeared for a bit there. I was just I disappeared. Ah, there yeah. you go. You came back now. I, I take your point. I take your point. I was just going to say the thing about those those kind of situations. What tends to happen, I, in my experience is if you throw something up there that uh, shows a level of professionality or ability, because a lot of people that join these things might be kind of really beginning out and might think, oh, actually, I don't want to... I don't. I don't want to look bad. I don't want to. This person would never want to work with me, for instance. You know, you you get an element of no, but you get a, an element of self filtering in those kind of things, and then maybe the professional people might be using it for different purposes, not looking for random collaborators, but collaborators that they I maybe think, already work in. I think the professional people, people like me, who've been making music professionally and working with other people professionally for like. 30 years this year it will be right? professional people like me what they think is like oh god i don't know if this is good enough and then they put it out there so i i never think my stuff is good enough i always put it out there and i just assume that nobody's working with me and this sounds like a massive sob story but it's not i just assume that nobody's working with me because that they've listened to it and thought oh that's really crap <laughs> well there's a variety so of if anyone wants to if anyone from the chat room wants to find me on splice and fancies like collaborating on something i'd love to do it and i would love to do more of it and i think it's a i think it could be a really cool thing and and the problem with any of these things when they come out is that they portray it as being this really cool world where the guy in Japan goes, woo, in his phone and then wakes up in yeah. the morning and there's a finished track there. But in the real world, I don't know that that ever happens. Mm. Um, and no, I would I, love it, it to happen. And I would love for people to be making music with all different abilities and being able to feed into some kind of system because because we're all... We have all our dogmas from working in the studio and we have very fixed ways of doing things. And it just takes a young upstart like a, a like someone like my brother to come along who has absolutely no clue how the keyboard works and and all the sequence or anything and bashes away at it and then makes something like NRG, which was basically him hitting a whole load of keys randomly and, and kind of created this thing because when he quantized it, it did something weird. We, uh, we need more people like that in the music industry who have no idea what's going on and, and, and create new directions for things. We need as many of those as there are, t uh, you know, professionals who've been doing it for years. Yeah, maybe so. So it, it needs to be it needs to be an interface that allows people of any ability to to have a go. I mean, Garage Cause... Band is good. If there was more collaboration from Garage Band, that's something that anybody with an iPad can. Well, hopefully, I mean, it appears well, to me like anyone with an iPad could load that and get a result. But maybe that's not oh, true either. Maybe I'm overestimating don't... people's ability. And don't yes. forget about the whole world band as well. Uh, Kevin Godley's. That's um... right. Yeah. Project yeah, well, I've where... that as well, and let's face it, that's not, you know... The, the, the problem with that is you actually have to be a musician and you have to be able to play in real time and you have to be able to go on there and record your part in, in a take. 
and and I'm not sure mm. that everyone's capable of doing. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm supposed to be a professional musician, and I'm I'm scared of doing that because I'm thinking, oh God, and uh, you know, again, am I good enough? Is is what I'm going to put out there going to be sort of? Yeah, but you can you could you could cobble together takes and then just do a you know do a performance and then edit. The performance with whole wide world with whole world, whole world band. Oh, they you? added editing in now. That it wasn't in there no, when I tried it. No, but no. What I mean is, you would do it. Um, I oh. play it in on the fly, like fly it in. No, you I'm play it. You play. You edit. You edit your track, and then you uh, then you would do, upload it then, rather than just you know do the first. I thing didn't think up. you could do that. I thought you had to play along with it. I thought you had to set your iPad up yeah, I... as a camera stroke, point it at yourself, and then jam along with someone else. Mm, uh, I'm not sure, Gaz. I mean, yeah, sorry, I think you're right, actually. Maybe, maybe you're right, maybe you're right. I, anyway, um, the, the just we just did have a little visitation from a spammer, and the bot seems to be... Which, uh, which, which of course, of it, which of course of makes a mockery of all of their promotional videos, because everyone on there has clearly recorded their parts in the studio and then created these kind of starter multi-track packs for other people to come along and work with, which means that people like that Rolling Stone geezer, his name I've completely forgotten, yeah, who's Keith. on it, uh, looks Woods. amazing on there, and you like go, yeah, wow, he looks really cool. And then if I point my iPad at myself and I strum along on my guitar, it's never, you know, it's not going to be ever as polished. Well, yeah, but you're not him. That puts me off. It puts me off. Yeah, maybe. No, I'm a better guitarist than him, but that's not the <laughs> point. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not quite as confident as he is. You know. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, it's. I, I just kind of thought it was cool, and I thought, well, actually, you know, maybe you're right though, Gaz. If if Figure had a little bit more musical kind of. Uh, um, capabilities you know as hmm. as take does but I just, it's an interesting idea rather than this notion of real-time collaboration it just makes it easier from a suite of apps that anybody who's involved could just do that i just it's a sort of different take on the whole thing and i quite like i quite like the vibe of it and i guess the video yeah. sold me and the sales job was done very well on that i th I, I think maybe though it's maybe for amateurs and beginners and more going to appeal more to i think the, the take and figure side of things. Yeah, maybe perhaps. so. Maybe so. Uh, and, I, I don't and, there's, I, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, um, I mean, I, cool. I don't know whether there's any attribution or anything. So if it ever becomes a, a thing, what whether there's a you know a history because I know that Whole World Band has has an attribution and rights and you know royalties and all sorts of other potential for it. But um, yeah, okay. Um, well. Oh, it's quarter past five. That probably sounds like a good time to stop. I know that, uh, uh, but also in public beta is Electron's Overbridge, I wanted to say as well. So if you want to check that out and you've got some Electron mm. stuff, I signed up for it just because I would get updates. Because um, you could just, all you need is an email address and a name. It's actually quite straightforward. You don't need to sign, you know, sign any horrible highness uh, agreements or anything. So it's actually quite useful um, technology to get involved with. But sadly, I have no Electron equipment. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Rich, you had the analog keys there for a bit did you or the analog something or other there for a bit sure did it uh did it ever did, did it ever get switched on more times to uh to, to give you some enjoyment or was it uh, a bit too close it's a bit of a learning curve i think we've discussed that before no we? no no i actually did find myself having fun with it which is what a self-contained environment like that should inspire somebody to do and i developed an appreciation for it through using it yeah. more than i expected to my only concern about the thing, and it isn't a deal breaker, but it just didn't make me want to spend my money for it, was the size of the window through which you yeah. have to look at that enormous construction site. I think that's it's a little tiny hole in the fence. Absolutely, and there's yeah. a big world yeah. in there, and yeah. that's the only downside of the thing to me. I thought it was a really well conceived, well thought out, great sounding, fun to use instrument. Well, maybe um, Overbridge would work because there's a really quite a nice full screen editor for all of that stuff, and you can auto. Yeah, I've got to look at that. That looked briefly. Really good. Yeah, yeah, that looked pretty good. So, uh, yeah, if you're out there and you you want to get involved, because I mean, Overbridge is quite exciting technology, as we know. It's kind of using host uh, host mode and aggregation and all sorts of things to bring all these instruments in, which I know, Gaz, you're very excited to buy. But I don't. Yeah, think you, you don't own any electron instruments anymore, so I guess. And so I keep reading about Octatrax. People are passionate about them. They reckon that they're incredible things, Octatrax. And yeah. uh, when I've watched videos of it, I just kind of just, oh, it 
that does look a little bit too much. But people say once you get over that, then the thing is a liberating, amazing tool that, that is incomparable to anything else. And it's like when I hear that, it kind of always gets me going, Ooh. but of course, Octatrack sadly isn't, isn't overbridge compatible. Isn't though. overbridge. And the thing that would put me off Oct- Octatrack is just things like it uses compact flash rather than SD cards. And it just seems like maybe some of the things are just, a f- you know, that maybe there should be an update around the corner, possibly, but they take a long time to update their products, so don't they? Well, I, you know, as, as with it, many of these guys, um, you, you don't kind of appreciate, one doesn't appreciate how small yeah. the team that is involved That's in these things you know they're kind of little companies yeah. and you know no i i understand that and i knew saying that is a kind of slightly contentious issue um but yeah uh overbridge certainly i think could be a, a deal you know a you know a game changer or, and do we know if the roland mx1 mixer you know is going to be able to support other devices in those Class uh, compliancy. Well, yeah, it's in, uh, I don't know. I mean, I did. Ah, uh, that was my first question when it came here. I know that they are considering, you know, those sort of questions. I don't know whether or not it's going to be happening, or whether maybe it will come along in future technology. Mm. But yeah, I agree. The MX One only makes sense really if you've got other ira products which is fine but it they, they could sell so many more if you could plug a bunch of ipads into it or oh, whatever it was grief. yeah if you could ipads any class com- compliant device i would get one I would, I, I would get i'm one. thinking the thing that's going to cause problems with something like that is multiple sample rate conversions across different devices that's going to eat a lot of cpu and you know it's going to require a lot of grunt to be able to do that in real time across various different non roland devices shall we say I think that's going to be the, the the thing that would be holding that sort of thing up. Right. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us, everybody. And thank you uh, to the chat room. Thanks again to Dan, Superstar Dan, as he's called there in the chat room. He's been operating the chat room. He's the guy who created it, it all to be nickname registered and all of those things. And we did have a little bit of trouble earlier, but they got booted off by the Sonic State bot that he set up. So woohoo! obviously not worth hanging around for that so we might have uh, fended him off so thank you very much to Dan in the chat room and thank you very much to all my uh, all, all the people also in the chat room who've contributed and um, always enjoy your input thank you very much I think I just I press the button I think I can press yeah there we go and also um, thank you very much to my guest Rich Hilton over there in Connecticut thank you very much for joining us I get are you f- about to jet off somewhere you must be in um, nearly in festival mode I think the sun's coming um, in the UK in 10 days, I'll be coming to London, Ah, Ooh. where oh, we'll be playing on the 21st at Hyde Park. Ah, excellent. That'll be fun. Do they put you up in a really swanky hotel in London? Hyde Park Corner, perhaps? One of those? Uh, something on the... Whatever that road is that borders the north edge of the park. Something along that road there. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, that's good. There's some very rock and yeah. roll hotels there. I think I remember going to one of those once. Anyway, mm-hmm. Rich, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And Ooh. we'll go over to Gaz. Gaz, also, thank you. And thank you for your input this week with the uh, um, uh, the Korg Little Bit Synth Pro review. If you haven't seen that, check it out. And the fun <laughs> synth jam that we put in as well. That was uh, that was good fun. It went down well. What do you think? My edit there at the beginning, I thought I was very proud of that because you were introducing a solo synth jam, but I zoomed in on you, so it was as if I was there. <laughs> I, it's great, I hijacked yeah. it rather, but uh, thank you ever so much. That was great. Well, why? But have you noticed what people are saying, Nick? They want more. They want more. Yes. And you thought, and like you know, we knew that it was just a kind of, just a you know, casual little jam. We didn't, you know, it's nothing. It's you know, it's not like great music, whatever. But at the same time, more. I'm up for doing more of those yeah, things. Yeah, I'm up for doing more. Maybe we should, every time you come over, we should do it. And, and uh, Mark, Mark Tinley, uh, they were suggested yeah. in the YouTube comments that you should come along with a, some sort of drum device or drum machine, apparently, to uh, to join us, to join in. So maybe we can organise that <laughs> at some point and just have a bit of freeform oh, okay. nonsense. Get, get Dave get Dave down. Yeah, and well. uh, Rich, if you're in the guitar? country... I'd like to bring my guitar. Well, I'm sure that would be possible. Is it synth jam or is it... Uh, or, well, uh, it could be. What were you up to? It depends on it depends on the uh, on the day. I don't know. There's no there's there's no form to it whatsoever, as you could probably tell by what we did. Because uh, <laughs> what I have to do when we're doing that, that because I was um, filming Gaz doing his review when I and it was just me and him here. What I have, I've got this little shot sequencer 
that just runs and we just I just join the shot and then it just randomly switches cameras all over the place. But it seemed to work all right this time. I thought, I thought, Does anyone I thought want to play Glastonbury? Me. I'm I'm playing Glastonbury. <laughs> fringe, well, festival. Uh, at the same at the same time as the um at the same time as the Glastonbury Festival, there is a fringe festival in Glastonbury Town itself. Oh, and uh, we're looking for people to play here. So what, if anybody uh, wants I, I, to play the same... uh, Go on. I wonder. Yeah, so I'm at the playing... same time, there's a marquee in the middle of the town, or there's various different venues around Glastonbury. Any, any, um, any gigs on the Friday night? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I've, got a, I've been I'm asked put... to help find people to play, so <laughs> I don't know who's playing. I'm, I'm playing at the main festival uh, with this new... Afrobeat band called Matuki, and oh, yeah. uh, that's it's oh, that's a cool. It's really good. Um, uh, very very funky. It's good. It's good for me. I get to play like the most. Ah, oh, I get to really shred, which I don't. <laughs> oh, 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 I get to go two hundred miles an hour on this one, and I, you know, normally I'm at to, you know, do the slow lane thing, but this is great. It's um, it's good fun. But we're playing on the Sunday. So if anyone's at Glastonbury, Sunday, 12.30, it, well, in the afternoon, Glade Stage, Matuki. Right. Or 6.30 in, in the Avalon Cafe. Excellent. Well. well, I think we've got another show or two before then, but uh, I, I guess I should wrap up now because that's probably it for this week. But thank you very much. I think I, I think I was wrapping up and then we kind of veered off, which is absolutely fine. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much, everybody, uh, for joining us. I think I said goodbye to you, Gaz, as well, and Mark and Rich. Thank you all. And also... As we say, the chat room and uh, superstar Dan for sorting it all out. Thank you very much. You didn't say goodbye to me, actually. Did I not? Ah, oh, so, sorry, mate, Mark. I was going to get into some whole religious connotation here because I decided now in the chat room that we all have crosses. So we're all in this kind of cult and the, you're at the top and you've got a sign. So we're all going like, hey, Nick, <laughs> show me a sign. And you're like showing the sign and we're all like... Right. I'm not sure. Oh, I was going to say about Hyde Park as well. I was also going to say that I once had a bit of an accident with a chemical substance in Hyde Park. <laughs> and I went into Hyde Park with this girl that I was going out with at a time. And we sat near this huge lake and there were all these swans on the lake. And I found this wallet and I thought, God, it's got money in it. So I took the money out and I threw the wallet in the lake. Uh, and I, so I stole this guy's money. But oh. what I didn't realise was I was the guy whose money I was stealing and I threw my driver's <laughs> license <laughs> into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> the next day i was like i've lost my wallet and then i was like where's all this money come from and then I took oh, me a week to awesome. out, but... <laughs> the benefits of uh loss of short-term memory in so many ways that's brilliant <laughs> What a great story to end on, Mark. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, Mark. Goodbye. And thank you, Rich. And thank you, Gaz. That's it for this week. And uh, it's a wrap. So I'm going to fade to black and we'll call it a day.